Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Today we'll be taking another look at Fry's Electronics. If you're not familiar with Fry's Electronics, each of their stores carry a unique theme, and this location in Phoenix, Arizona is themed as an Aztec temple. Previously we had looked at the Tempe, Arizona location which carries a golf theme, but honestly I think this Aztec temple theme is much more visually appealing. The reason we're looking at Fry's Electronics again is that it appears things have gotten much worse for them. In the previous video I did at the Tempe store, we had noted a lot of things like a lot of empty shelves and a lot of dust and, and things just not looking very well kept or stocked. And I have to tell you, at this Phoenix store, it does look like things are much worse. For example, the Nintendo Switch is a pretty hot thing right now and there's next to no Nintendo stuff stocked. I did enjoy seeing that Mario statue though, they, they did used to have one of those at the Tempe location that I used to go to quite a bit in the past, but it seems to be gone, I'm not sure what happened to it, but it's pretty neat to see it here now, it's just weird that it's over the Microsoft section. Before we continue discussing Fry's Electronics though, I just want to give a quick shout out to Sergio Elizondo of Sergio and the Holograms. It's actually his music that you're hearing there in the background, specifically his ukulele video game covers, but he also does a lot of really cool just like one-man band video game covers, so I'll put a link down to his YouTube channel and his webpage down in the description below. Definitely check it out. Back to Fry's Electronics, so if you take a look at the shot, you can see what I mean about things not being stocked. There's just lots of empty space on the shelves. This is the electronics component section, and it doesn't look like they've gotten any shipments of this stuff in a very long time. And this isn't unique to this store. We noticed the same thing at the Tempe location in the previous video, and I've also been getting lots of messages and emails from people saying they're seeing the same thing at their local Fry's Electronics all over the country. This was my first trip to this particular location, and I have to say this is not a good first impression. I was really surprised to see that all of their computers out on the floor are still running Windows XP, and from what I understand, a lot of their backend systems are still DOS-based. Now I did used to shop at the Tempe location quite a bit for PC components, so I was shocked to see this. This is their wall where they display all of their memory and CPUs that they have for sale. And as you can see, it is completely empty. This is another area that it doesn't look like they've gotten any new shipments in a very long time. I covered the history of Fry's Electronics in depth in my previous video, so I'll just kind of give a quick Reader's Digest version here. The company was founded in 1985, by John, Randy, and David Fry, along with a fourth partner, Catherine Calder. If the Fry's name sounds familiar, it's because John, Randy, and David are actually the sons of Charles Fry, who is the guy that started Fry's Supermarkets. He actually gave them the seed money to start this company. Even though their logos and names are similar, the two companies are actually not related, and Fry's Supermarkets is now owned by Kroger. Over here is the laptop area, and you can see it looks pretty sparse as well. Now this display might be my favorite part of the store, it's located in the back, and it's a group of Aztec people, but if you look closer at it, a lot of them are holding really old technology. You can see a really old desktop PC, an old CRT monitor, there's motherboards and old keyboards strewn about, and one of them's even lugging a huge CRT television. I think that stuff may have been there since the store opened. Right next to that display is their home theater room, or presentation room as they call it. And it's set up like a small movie theater, and I believe it's meant to show off their latest offerings as far as audio and visual stuff goes. But as you can see, there's no one in here checking it out. They just had the Deadpool Blu-ray demo screen running, and we also noticed a kind of funky smell in here. And we also noticed that some of the seats were damaged as well. You can see it looks like part of the cushion was just ripped off here, and they just put some tape over it. Next to that presentation room, they have a few product demo alcoves, and these are very sparsely stocked as well. I thought for a minute I was looking at a Sears electronics department. In the center of the store is the cafe, and from what I understand, I think all Fry's electronics stores have this. This one's kind of a little miniature Mayan temple within the temple, and there was nobody in here. We felt really bad for the lady that was working in here. She must have been extremely bored, but we did stop off for a couple of drinks while we were filming. The operating hours for the cafe are kind of weird too. It's only open for a couple of hours a day. I guess that makes sense when you don't have a lot of customer traffic coming through. Fry's Electronics is a privately held company, so they keep their financial information private, so it's really pretty much impossible to use any of that to find out how the company is doing, but 
If this toy aisle is any indication, things are not going well at all. We noticed these toys from the Trolls movie, and that came out in 2016, and I don't think they carry toys for a three-year-old movie anymore in places like Target or Walmart. There are threads on message boards from current Fry's Electronics employees, though, confirming that things are going pretty poorly. There's mention of suppliers not getting paid, stores not getting shipments for months on end, and even rumors that they are planning to actually shut down the entire company right after the Christmas shopping season. Many employees have stated what they believe is happening is a slow motion liquidation sale. It is really surprising for me to see Fry's Electronics look like this. I did a lot of shopping at the Tempe location in the late 90s and early 2000s and it was always packed. And from what I understand, when this store opened in the late 90s, it was also just as busy. And that's something you've probably noticed from the footage. Besides the severe lack of product on the shelves, there's a severe lack of customers in the store. This was filmed on a weekend afternoon, and there were a lot of times we felt like we had the entire store to ourselves besides just a handful of employees milling around looking like they were trying to find something to do. It must be pretty depressing to work here when there's no products to stock on the shelves and no customers to help. Here's a quick shot of their back room area, and you can see even those racks are empty, which I think lends credence to the rumors that some stores aren't getting shipments of new product for months on end. Even weirder are the things that seem to be very well stocked are items you wouldn't think about going to Fry's Electronics for, like pet items and as seen on TV stuff. Another well stocked area is the fragrance aisle. This is something that a lot of people mention on the internet and is very strange. Who goes to the electronics store to purchase fragrances? Like uh, Eau de la Dr. Pepper here. But seriously though, that's always something we see in struggling retail locations are empty drinks all over the place. These last couple of aisles we've looked at were the DVD and Blu-ray aisles, but that's now all been consolidated to just one aisle. And you can see this is looking a little sparse as well. It looks like there's more Blu-rays than DVDs. The Blu-rays are on the right and the DVDs are on the left. A lot of these were marked at full price, even though a lot of them are titles that you would find in the discount bins at Walmart. We also thought it was kind of strange that this seemed to be the only aisle that was one way. There was a wall here blocking this end of it. So we went to go see what was on the other end, and it turns out this is where they carry the adult movies. Fry's Electronics does still carry them, people have asked me about that. Although, this section is looking very, very sparse as well. There's so little selection here, it's pretty much not even worth having this section anymore. And the titles that were here look like they've been sitting here for a very long time. There was a lot of dust on them. Right next to the movie section is the music section. We can see Kurt Cobain and Jimi Hendrix there, but... A lot of this area is actually being used for audio equipment now, and a lot of it looked like it was open box and demo stuff. The CD selection was very small. It was pretty much maybe just a third of an aisle on one side, which this doesn't surprise me though. Places like Best Buy have actually stopped carrying CDs completely, so this is just what's left. But their vinyl selection, which vinyl's become very popular now, was also pretty disappointing. A lot of times when we come across vinyl sections when I'm out filming with Mark, he'll spend a lot of time flipping through all the records, and actually it only took him about five minutes to go through this stuff. The store is absolutely huge, but now with all these empty shelves all over the place, it really just makes it seem like it's too big for its own good. It used to be if you were looking for some obscure electronic component or a PC part, people would tell you, go to Fry's Electronics, they're going to have it for sure, they're huge, but now I don't think that's the case anymore. Even their magazine section is looking really sad. I, I know a lot of magazines aren't published anymore, but it looks weird with it being just stocked with lots of loose leaf paper. The magazines don't actually start until the very end over here. It looks like Fry's Electronics might actually be gone soon, so I want to make sure and document as many of their stores as I can since each one has a unique theme to it, which I think is kind of cool. If you're a Fry's Electronics employee, I'd love to know what your thoughts about what's going on with the company are down in the comments below because the ownership is very tight-lipped about things and it seems like the best source of information are employees that are willing to share. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the tour here. As always everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retail archaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my update video on Fry's Electronics. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.